Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. Happy Friday. I hope you guys are doing good today. So this is a week in wrap up video. There's a lot going on today. If you guys do not know, Meg Thee Stallion finally dropped her latest single and it is called Cobra. And so she has been trending all day um, because of this particular verse in Cobra. I want y'all to go ahead and hear this snippet really quick. All right, so you guys just heard that snippet. Basically, she said, pulled up, caught him cheating, getting his peen sucked in the same spot I'm sleeping, okay? So that is what Meg Thee Stallion said. And so basically, child, you know these social media detectives, honey, they done came to their own conclusion. And the conclusion is it was partisan. Partisan was cheating on her. So Meg was trending. Party was trending. And so Party was getting drugged all up and down Twitter all this morning. It was very interesting to watch. And a lot of people were like just really, really upset. They're saying that, you know, how dare, you know, he get with her and, you know, make her feel comfortable and, you know, make Megan his girl only for him to cheat on her. You know, men ain't shit. I mean, it was a lot of very interesting comments. Y'all see them here as I'm posting them. Now, another thing that I found very interesting is that Party has, you know, somewhat replied back. He hasn't said anything, you know, verbally, but he did take to his Instagram page and he posted that infamous clip of Future where Future is saying it's an evil world. Y'all go ahead and check this out. It's an evil world we live in. And then, then he ended up posting another clip of Tristan third trimester Thompson, okay, where he's laughing. And we all know not only is Future a serial cheater and a serial impregnator, but so is Tristan, okay? He not only dates people, gets them pregnant, and then bounces out by the third trimester. So it's very interesting that these are the two men that he chose to put on his, you know, his Instagram profile as a quote-unquote response to the internet. Now, as far as this whole situation, I don't care one way or another, um, but I find it very interesting that everybody is so upset that she might have been potentially cheated on by party. We don't know she's talking about party. We don't know she's talking about a different ex. So yeah, so this entire situation is a hot damn mess, but y'all know me. I don't really care one way or another, but I did like the song. I thought the song was good. I thought she was being very, very honest about her feelings, um, you know, her missing her parents and stuff like that. So I do like the Cobra song, but I do notice that y'all don't give her the same energy that y'all give Doja Cat. Anytime Doja goes dark, here comes all the breakdowns. Meg goes dark, a lot of excuses. So I found that situation very, very funny. But, you know, do I think that party cheated on her? I don't know and I really don't care. Um, that's their personal business. But I do find it very interesting that he decided to post these two fuckboys in response. <laughs> so moving on. So now on top of all of that, if you guys don't know, Ari... And Ra Ali are once again beefing. I'm like, what year is this? 2021? Um, they were beefing a few years ago on social media, threatening each other. And once again, their beef has reared its ugly head. So Ra Ali has been trending all morning. So basically what went down is that Ari, she's on some show. I think it's on BT called The Impact. Never watched it. But the video is going viral of Ari meeting her dad. And the dad is just weird. She's like crying and upset that her father wasn't in her life. And he's just like giggling like a schoolgirl, and just doesn't seem to care one way or another. I don't know if he's uncomfortable because he's on reality television and he's not used to the limelight. But it was just a really odd interaction to see her get really vulnerable and emotional. And the dad is just literally like, oh, but I see you on Instagram because... Seeing your child on Instagram means being a full-time parent. Sir, sit the fuck down. Anyways, y'all go ahead and check out this video really quick, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Even though I don't, like, see you physically like we doing now, I'm strolling through Instagram, and then I see a picture of you. I'm like, oh, okay, she doing all right. I'm, I don't even have to communicate with her. I'm your daughter. I just need you as a dad. You, we keep talking about money. We keep talking about child support. I'm only we saying that. We talking about all the things that are unimportant to me. I don't care. Like, do you not understand it? Like, I, I do understand. Okay. All right.
All right, so after that video went viral and a lot of people were giving, you know, Ari props for being vulnerable and all that stuff, Ra Ali had this to say about her. So Ra says, when you're such a lowlife, even your daddy won't deal with you. He knew you were a demon from birth. So that is what Ra Ali had to say, and a lot of people were really mad about her for saying that about, you know, Ari. But from what I heard online, they're saying that the reason why Ra does not like... um Ari is because Ari told her that she would like kick the baby out her stomach when Ra Ali was pregnant. Child, I didn't know that Ra Ali was pregnant and had a child. I I guess I'm so out the loop with her. Had no idea. So that's where their beef stems from is from Ari saying that she would like beat up Ra Ali when she was pregnant. So Ra Ali wrote that and then um, Ari replied back and she said, Ra, I got your address and your social. Find somebody to play with because I'm feeling like a real demon right now. Then she says, keep eating crumbs from off the floor, bitch. I've been pressing old soggy bitches all my life without even applying no pressure. Then Ra Ali replies back and she says, I absolutely love living in Miami. One of my favorites is the Porsche building. Some good folks all around. Then she says, come and get me, baby. Then Ari responds back and she says, Ra, you ready to wake up out your sleep in them cold sweats again? You know I get the best of you. I control you. I'm finna be her topic for the next year and a half. You my slave, bitch. Bitch, you not a bully. That shit don't scare nobody. Then Ra Ali posted a picture of her daughter and she had a wink eye emoji so then um Ari ended up reposting it and she wrote laughing my ass off so a lot of people were kind of dragging Ari and saying you know kids need to be left out of it so one user says this I just think leave kids out of the beef for a lifetime I don't care but the kids so Ari replies back and she says that went over y'all's head she's trying to play like she's crazy behind her kid she knows so at that point, people were kind of dragging Ari. They posted a picture of Ari's son, and they wrote the same caption, laughing my effing ass off. So this whole situation is a hot damn mess. So that was their back and forth. Ari's in her late 20s. I just, I don't, I just don't go back and forth with people in their 20s. I feel like they're young enough to be my kids. I did like, though, I did like the video with her and her dad. I did like the fact that Ari was being very, very vulnerable, because I've never seen her like that. So... And it just kind of shows that as parents, you know, you have to be in your children's lives, especially men. You know what I'm saying? Your boys need you and definitely your daughters need you. So it did spark up a really good conversation. But it's kind of sad that Ra Ali, you know, decided to kind of twist the narrative and say that she was a demon child. But definitely leave the babies out of it. Leave Ra's daughter out of it. Leave Ari's son out of it. The kids have nothing to do with the adults. If the adults want to beef back and forth and argue and call each other names, whatever, that's social media, but definitely leave the babies out of it. So moving on to the next topic, we got to talk about this situation with Keefe D. Now, okay, when keeping it real goes all the way the fuck wrong, okay? First and foremost, I remember there was a time not too long ago where Keefe D was gloating, would not shut the fuck up, he was literally on a documentary bragging about having, you know, basically playing a hand in the death of Tupac. But that wasn't enough for Keefe D. Okay, they gave him the proffer deal. They let him talk in the documentary. He got a little bit of shine from that. But he still would not have a tall glass to shut the fuck up. He felt like he needed more shine, more fame. All of a sudden, he started popping up on all of these social media platforms. He was on he was on Vlad, a.k.a. Fed TV, running his mouth. Time out, he didn't care about prison. He didn't care about going to jail. It is what it is. He's built for this. Then he was on the Homeboys YouTube channel, The Art of Dialogue. Remember, he was on there crying for Diddy to help him out and, you know, just running his mouth, child. Well, now what's very interesting is that not only did Keefe D, you know, who, you know, shit, I thought he had a little bit of money saved from these damn podcasts he's been doing. He went and got a public pretender, a.k.a. a public defender, instead of getting a real, you know, paid lawyer, okay? So he's out here with a public defender talking about he's not guilty. Sir, what the, what in the upside down world is going on here? When my dear posted that shit this morning, that's what woke me up. I woke up, I said, uh-uh, oh no, we're not gonna do that. That's what we're not gonna do. We're not gonna be bragging for years since the early 2000s, honey. And then all of a sudden, 2023, I'm not guilty. Uh-uh, not after all that tea you've been spilling on Fed TV, on Art of Dialogue, on Say Cheese, and whoever else was interviewing this man. Uh-uh. If I was a judge, I'd have been like, I know you lying. 
I know you are joking right now, calling yourself pleading not guilty. If you don't sit your ass down, you've been confessing all these years. She should have played back the damn podcast clips. See, I'm petty. That's why I don't need to be a judge. I'm petty as hell. Because I'd have been like, Keefy D, is this you? Y'all need to come buy my book. Compton is a street legend. It's good read, man. It's nothing but the truth. He gave the gun to Orlando, and Orlando shot Tupac and Shug. Yeah, he did his thing, yeah. Is this you bragging on Art of Dialogue? Is this you, sir? And now you're in my courtroom wasting my time wanting to take this shit to trial? Talking about you're not guilty? Y'all go ahead and watch this video. This is a mess. As to that charge, how do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Dwayne Cafe D. Davis pleaded not guilty to the 1996 murder of rapper Tupac Shakur. The defendant appeared in court for the third time, only entering a plea now. The judge had delayed arraignment because Davis didn't have a lawyer. Mr. Davis, have you been able to retain the services of counsel? No, Davis was still without a lawyer and was pointed a public defender. Nevada state prosecutors also said they were not going to seek the death penalty. In every first degree murder case, I have to ask the state if they are going to commit to or committing to try to seek the death penalty. I just asked them that and they said no. Davis was arrested back in September, 27 years after Tupac's killing. All right, see, I just saw that news clip. So like I said, this whole situation's a hot mess. But we are going to be paying close attention to the story and to see how everything plays out. But yeah, that had me like just all the way shook this morning <laughs> when I seen that he pled not guilty. So anyways, now concerning a whole nother court case, you guys know on this channel, we've been following the whole finance saga with Sam Bankman Freed. Um, I've been on top of that story from the time it broke. And so yesterday... Sam Bankman Freed was found guilty on all charges. Okay, the former crypto king has been convicted and found guilty. And he is looking at like a child damn near 100 years in prison. I want y'all to go ahead and watch New this. New jury found former cryptocurrency CEO Sam Bankman Freed guilty of fraud, conspiracy, and money laundering. The FTX co founder was found guilty last night after four hours of deliberation. His trial is one of the most high profile financial crimes cases in years. The 31 year old maintained his innocence despite his company, FTX, going bankrupt in 2022. My name is Damian Williams, and I'm the United States Attorney here in the Southern District of New York. Sam Bankman Freed perpetrated one of the biggest financial frauds in American history, a multi billion dollar scheme designed to make him the king of crypto. But here's the thing the, crypto, the cryptocurrency industry might be new. The players like Sam Bankman Freed might be new. But this kind of fraud, this kind of corruption, is as old as time, and we have no patience for it. When I became U.S. Attorney, I promised that we would be relentless in rooting out corruption in our financial markets. This is what relentless looks like. This case moved at lightning speed. That was not a coincidence, that was a choice. And it's also a message. It's a warning, this case, to every single fraudster out there who thinks that they're untouchable, or that their crimes are too complex for us to catch or that they're too powerful for us to prosecute, or that they could try to talk their way out of it when they get caught. Those folks should think again and cut it out. And if they don't, I promise we'll have enough handcuffs for all of them. Now this verdict would not have been possible without the incredible work of the career prosecutors from my office and the special agents from the FBI who have been there every single step of the way. We have pushed them hard and they have met the moment and I am grateful for their service. Let me end with this. I understand that this case has gotten a lot of public attention. That makes sense. But the women and men of the Southern District of New York and the FBI consistently deliver outstanding public service on behalf of the American people without fear or favor and without any expectation of public acclaim. They do it because they believe in the rule of law. They do it because they love this country. They are patriots, and I am proud to serve with them. 
Thank you, everyone. All right, so y'all just saw that news clip. Um, he was found guilty on seven charges. They said that the jury, there was so much evidence that it literally took the jury a few hours to find him guilty. And he's looking at up to 110 years in prison, which is insane, you know? And I just remember how people were just toting this guy as some type of genius and crypto this and FTX this and FTX that. And, you know, everybody was trying to join and all these celebrities and influencers were promoting it. And now a lot of folks are really, really quiet. And it's sad because a lot of regular people bought into this and they lost their life savings. They lost their pensions. And so for him to try and play it off like, oh, you know, I just had no idea what was going on. And I was just the face of everything. All of his people's turned on him. They all flipped he was definitely the head of the operation. He knew what he was doing. He was trying to play crazy and young and, you know, goofy, altruistic billionaire with the messy hair. But the whole time he was just a fraudster. Instead of doing his fraud in a slick three-piece suit, you know what I'm saying, and flashing his money around and driving Lambos, he did it more covertly. But either way, it caught up to him. And I'm glad that um, the U.S. attorney, Damian Williams, um, said what he had to say. Like, they are cracking down. People are tired of all these scams, these frauds, especially in the finance industry with crypto, you know, the housing industry with real estate. What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. Flipping MJ. It is just too much going on out here, and the people who are suffering are regular people who are just looking to try and invest their money, and they're just being scammed by these, you know, slick-talking shysters on social media. So I say good riddance to trash. I don't feel bad for Sam Bankman fried at all. You know, he better hope that he's able to get a vegan meal in prison because we know he wasn't able to get one in jail, okay? So what the government just said, hey, fraudsters, I get it. You know, you're in a new technology. Crypto's different. We're going to roll different. You know, beat it, you boomers, because that really was Sam Bankman Fried's brand, right? He even said that people over the age of 40, he had no use for. <laughs> well, the government just said, check yourself before you wreck yourself. And guess what he just did? It's sending himself to jail for possibly 110 years. And what you might say, oh, it's really confusing. I don't get crypto. There's nothing confusing about this. This was an old school fraud case and the government got his four closest allies to flip on him. He chose to take the stand. They showed up with receipts. They used his own words against him and boom, a conviction in four hours. That's massive. So now, last but not least, this story is the craziest story that went viral today. So if y'all don't know, the plug done got caught down there in Houston, Texas, okay? And the plug was not caught with a bird of coke. The plug was not caught with a bunch of QPs of weed, right? No, the plug got caught with multiple packs of oxtails in their car. They had packs of oxtails, they had some packs of beef, and they had one jumbo pack of shrimp, okay? Oxtails have become so expensive and they're now like some type of delicacy to everyone, like back in the day was like what poor folks ate, now they're a delicacy. So anyways, they've gone up in price crazy. And so now there's all these theft rings that go around stealing oxtails because it's gotten that bad. And so they were popped today. I want y'all to watch these news clips and I'll come back with the rest of my comments. New at six o'clock, two men are facing charges for stealing at least a dozen packages of oxtails in addition to steaks and ground beef, all from local grocery stores. Constable Mark Herman's office says they pulled the suspects over on the Northwest Freeway and noticed the stolen meat during a traffic stop. And welcome back to the Factor Uncensored. It's not every day you see stolen meat recovered by Harris County deputies, but we're in Houston. Very diverse, but still a country-ass town that I love. Deputies from the Harris County Constable Precinct 4's office found several pounds of meat during a traffic stop. You're looking at it there. Now, two men were arrested for stealing everything from shrimp, brisket, steaks, and especially oxtails. If you love oxtails, you already know how the coveted meat is and how they have spiked in price over the last year. We have seen an increase, get this, of more than 300% in the cost of the coveted cow's tail over the last year. What, average cost? What's the price on that? Uh, this one actually, uh, 37, 36, three pounds. Wow. Yes, sir. $37, yes, three sir. pounds. Mm -hmm. 
So, Gregor, you work at Orlando's, too, and in the meat industry. Were you shocked when you saw people stealing oxtails? Yes, sir. I was actually surprised because you normally hear about people stealing clothes and everything else, but to see people actually on the news for stealing meat, it's something different. You know, that's like <laughs> very, very different. Times are getting hard, you know, for us to be still in meat, you know. So, yes, sir. And do you see a reason why they would? Obviously, prices have gone up on oxtails from three ninety nine to nine ninety nine. But do you see that as a reasonable uh, excuse for stealing meat? There's really never no excuse for stealing, but I can understand why. You know, because you take it from the stores that they get it from, and then you go out into the world and flip it for a little bit of nothing, you know? So it's like a hard life out here, uh -huh. you know, for everybody. So, you know, like people going to the stores and stealing shoes, and then you come back and you don't sell them for a price, you sell them cheaper. Mm -hmm. So it's the same way, you know, for the less fortunate people, you know, some are probably going to the store and steal meat, and then they sell it for a cheaper price. Mm -hmm. So I can kind of understand that because every, not everybody get food stamps. Right. All right, so you guys just saw those news clips. Now, the thing that's most funny about this whole situation is the fact that one of the uh, thieves, one of the oxtail thieves, is in the back of the police car crying. Then the other one is standing there. They're placing him under arrest. But if you look at his ankle, he has on an ankle monitor and bracelet. I'm like, now he know damn well he's wrong for that. He know damn well he ain't got no business out here stealing shit when your ass is on house arrest. You're not supposed to leave the house, okay, but to go to work. And you out here shoplifting oxtails. So you know right now your probation is canceled and you are going back to jail for literally stealing packs of oxtails. This don't make no damn sense. I couldn't make this story up if you paid me. So this entire situation is insane. So that's what went down today. So feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what y'all feel about this entire situation concerning Meg Thee Stallion and Party. How do y'all feel about Ra Ali versus Ari the Don? How do y'all feel about Keefe D pleading not guilty? How do you feel about Sam Bankman free? being found guilty on all seven counts and then last but not least how do y'all feel about you know these oxtail theft rings that are going viral on social media so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping feel free to leave a comment down below make sure you guys like the video feel free to share the video and i will talk to y'all later enjoy the rest of your day Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.